Since I dumped the carb over, you can see some of the gas has come out back right here where the gas connects to the float bowl. We've got a little screw there. Break that gently. Open it up. A lot of the gas will come out. Pan's not too dirty, you can use it to clean the jets. All right. Gas definitely likes to hide in a lot of different places in a carb. Not too big of a deal. Let's not forget to close that back up now so we don't forget and have it dump gas when we hook it back up later all right so then these are the screws that we're going to need to get to the jets basically the bottom of the car so you do not want to strip these so push down real firm hopefully it breaks so with that little click noise Number two screwdriver. Absolutely use a number two screwdriver for this. Like I said before, you can replace these with hex nuts if you want to afterwards. What you got is, I believe this is a pilot jet, but you have your slow jet is right there, and then your main jet is right here. So first, I'm going <clears throat> to pull the main jet, but for the setup I'm using, I'm going to keep it a 75. And sometimes you can look through it, and blow through it or whatever, and just kind of gauge to see if you can see a little hole through there that'll help obviously if it's not visible then it's definitely clogged both of these are brass they're very soft so you just you just want to be really careful if you feel like your screwdriver is too thick like this way definitely get something that fits it proper because once you mar these up or mess it up you're just pretty much screwed you got to buy new jets have a hell of a time getting that one out. Keep telling myself I'm going to buy myself a narrower screwdriver to do this. All right. So this, the main jet is a 75, and you should be able to see the number. Usually it's here, or sometimes you'll see it here on some of the aftermarket ones. Am I? I don't have a light on that, so I can't see it, but it should be a 75. This one should be 35. And I think you can see there's that 35 right there, which you probably can't see on camera, but that's how you know what that is. All right. I'm going to get something to clean that out later. Check this while we're there at it. It does look a little bit dry, so I'm not going to risk pulling it this time since I don't have a replacement, but let me just clean it off a little bit and maybe we'll look into getting a replacement for that. Right. So with that out, I'm going to pull the diaphragm as well because I want to spray the whole thing with carb cleaner and I don't want any rubber on the carb. But you can kind of ignore this middle stuff. If you're just rejetting to 
for an intake and you're not cleaning the carb, then you could ignore this middle part. I'll put everything back together and then put the jets back in at the end. Careful, don't bend that obviously. Here's your diaphragm. Do not tear that. And the needle right there, absolutely make sure you do not bend that. So when people talk about shimming the needle, it's done in there. That's a whole other thing. All right. A lot of stuff caked up on that. All right. So you can usually pull the cover off the enrichment valve. I'll clean that up a little bit. And then there's a little screw right there. Which I'm not having much luck with right now. You don't want to unscrew this because how much you screw this in or out this part right here this enrichment valve if you screw it in or out it changes how it does a cold start and how much air and fuel that it adds when you start your engine in the cold so if your bike's running fine don't adjust it there's a pretty good article on the Think Honda Spree Wikipedia about a buy starter and it's essentially this very same thing. It's a good article. And pull that out carefully and just do not mess that up. Alright. Put those parts by themselves over there. Alright. And this is your uh, throttle sensor. It's actually connected to, if you can see, when you hit the throttle by doing this, and it opens up the butterfly valve in there. This actually senses that. You'll kind of see how it works in a second. Just be real careful you don't strip these screws. It feels like it's about to budge the wrong way. Find a better grip. that off put that with it it's got this sort of that's connected to the butterfly valve in there and then you can see that there really isn't any way to put it on wrong you kind of have to put it on like this and then turn it it's got it has a little bit of tension but it's pretty simple once you've taken it off to figure out how to put it back on all right this is a really careful part you pull this up, what you want to do is get something to poke it with. Maybe I can just grab it. But there's a little pin. Oh, that's not a good lesson to show. poke it with. I'll be right back. Some guitar strings here that I pulled off guitar I was working on. I uh, might use it to clean the jets a little bit, but just push this pin out of the float bowl, or the float. You got that pin right there. Then you've got this little silver spring down here. I don't know if you can see that, but it just has this little edge right here that kind of, let's do it upside down. It just kind of fits into there, and then this part of the spring kind of fits into a hole on the carb. Right there. So you want to make sure, put that back the right way when you go in there, and just don't mess up that little piece or forget to put it back in. And then at this point, the carb is pretty much, guys, everything off of it that, as far as I want to go. 
for just a, just a general cleaning. Okay, so I'm going to just spray this down a bit. Um, you want to watch out because you, when you're spraying the car, you never know which direction it may come out or come back out at you. Probably should wear gloves, but whatever. Definitely the places where the jets are at. Find any little holes that go through the carb. Definitely like point it away from yourself. In here, there's a little hole right there. I especially like to get where the enrichment valve used to be. Um, generally throughout it all, I'll try to get, maybe even get any gunk off of it without spraying yourself. Looks like that's all the little holes. That'll be good. Okay. Uh, carb is all clean. Remember, I took all the rubber parts off of it, everything off that could be corroded by the carb cleaner. Took everything off there, cleaned it up. Uh, I'm going to reassemble it to the point where you didn't take everything apart, but then you're just rejetting for an intake. Okay. Um, so let's just reassemble this. Um, we'll take. We'll do the diaphragm first. Remember to be very, very careful with that needle. We do not want to bend that. Turn that around and get it in there. Make sure that it's properly in there. You push that down. Make sure it's seated properly. Uh, there's one side that has a screw hole and like a corner. And just set that down, but don't forget the spring. You know what? Do I have? I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna go get a new spring. I'll be right back. So we put the diaphragm back in. This is an older spring, just to be sure, since I happen to have an extra one, I'm going to go ahead and put this one in. I could conceivably cut a few things off this spring, cut one, one and a half things. That's a mod that a lot of people argue over. You know, it's something fun to try, but whatever. But we'll set this aside for now and go with a new one. Try to just get this running as best as possible. That aside, I'm just going to make sure that it looks good, that I didn't sit on it at some point or bend it. It looks fine. Set it in there. There's a little nubbin right there. We're going to connect it to there. And like I said before, the screw and that corner is going to go right there. So just make sure. All right. And then... Now, I've forgotten what side this goes on. Uh, it's probably there. I might just not even put that on there and then let the wire on, on, the, uh, on the bike just hang a little bit. It'll be easy to remove the carb without there, uh, that on there anyway. Because once you start messing around with the carb in the intake, chances are you're going to be pulling the carb plenty of time. So... Probably said it five times, but number two screwdriver. You could make a religion out of that. All right, the top's back on, nice and firm. Um, we're going to put the float bowl back together. Remember this tiny little silver piece? That's a spring. You want to slide that little bit right there. There's an end that has like a black part. But this end will fit right into this little groove here. There's a little hole in the carb where that spring fits. 
put it in there, make sure it's a little springy, and we'll take this little rod, and we'll just carefully navigate it through there, and then as long as it's in there good enough, once we get the bowl actually on there, it'll hold it in place, so you don't have to worry about it going anywhere. Um, I, oh, let's put the enrichment valve back on. And that goes right over, Jesus, right over there. All right, we'll just, hope oh, something slid off. <laughs> no, it's all good. Slide that back in gently. That O-ring is going to give us a little bit of resistance. Just make sure you put it in straight. And then if you make sure you put it in straight, you shouldn't be afraid to force it just a little bit. All right. And then getting that screw in. It's going to be hard to show you, but there's a little piece of metal that holds on to the enrichment valve. Basically what the enrichment valve does is in the cold, when the electricity goes to the bike when you first start it, that needle starts to expand and at first it's letting gas and air go through a couple of chambers or a couple of little, I forget what the, whole, the word is, but these little holes that are, these channels that run through it. Um, and as the needle heats up, this goo in it pushes the needle and covers that up. So tighten that down. That's back on. You can put the cover back on that later. Let's get the throttle sensor on. Just like I said, put it on like that and then kind of turn it on. So the screw will go in. All right. Then we are, if we put this back on. All right. Now. Now we are essentially back to, if you were just taking this apart to jet it, you would get to this point and you would have pulled these two jets and then we'll replace these two jets with something else. I'm going to go find the right jets for the intake that I want to use and I'll be right back. All right. So uh, for the intake that I'm going to use, I'm going to put the 75 main jet back in, although I am going to try to find... A guitar string that will fit through there and kind of drag it through a little bit nothing too rough maybe just a smidge of that drag it through and that should clean that out pretty good I don't know if I can catch that But it looks all right. Okay. These are a little bit harder to spot through. Um, I am going to put about a 38 in for the intake that I'm doing on this. Um, I don't think I, I don't know if this is a really, really, really tiny jet. Um, even if you can get it in a little ways, you can still kind of try to clean a little bit. Um, even check these little tiny holes right there. Let me see if I can clean that out a little bit. Oh, I was able to get through. So just kind of wiggle that around. If you've got nothing else, this is a all right way to do it. That should make 
pretty big difference. If you don't want to buy new jets, the easiest way is throw money at it and get some new jets and pretty much sure they'll be clear. I suppose sometimes you could have manufacturing flakes of metal. Um, and I've heard a lot of people who like to get smaller jets and just drill their jets out because that way they know for sure that they're the right size. Um, you know, a lot of these jets are made over in China, um, so you may or may not have exactly the size. Don't force that, it really, once it's in, it's really good. And let me just make sure I grab the right jet here. I don't know if you can see that, but that's a that's the 75. And put the right around, obviously. Tighten it, but just just enough. You do not want to force it. The brass is very delicate. All right. So that would be changing the slow jet and the main jet. And then you're ready to put this on. Like I said, make sure that that's fairly clean. This one does not look great, but I do not have a replacement. So I'm just going to try to wipe some of the grime off of it. Should be good enough for now. We'll try to order another one of those. That should fit on a distinct way. And then I'm going to tighten these down just barely. I don't think it's really important, but I always like to tighten them all, you know, kind of in a going around in a star pattern, if you will, or, you know, don't angle it by tightening one down too much, pinching the seal or something. Now's a good time, too, to make sure that you have actually tightened up the drain so that you don't, you don't want to get to try to get to that after you put this back on the bike. All right, and that is back together and basically ready to go. I'm going to get some intake parts, we'll build out the intake, and then uh, we'll work on reinstalling on the bike.